The Disrupt Education vlog can be found on YouTube. To hear it in podcast form, search Disrupt Education on any of the following podcast platforms. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, or Stitcher. Welcome to this episode of Disrupt Education. I have a special guest with me today, Coach Pavone. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I really appreciate you inviting me to your show. You bet. You bet. Now, um, kind of followed you on Instagram and, and uh, just great messages uh, that you're putting out. A um, lot of different things going on. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, so that is a very loaded question because uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a, a very long, winding road to get to who I am right now. So if, if I can take a minute to kind of give you that background or give you a better understanding of, of why the messages I put out, how I put them out. Yes. Um, so originally born and raised in New York from, from the Bronx, just a kid from the Bronx. Uh, I wanted to be a cop when I was young, right? Took the test, did all that stuff, got everything cleared, was ready to go. And they put a hiring freeze on. So, uh, you know, there was a hiring freeze. And, you know, at that point I was married. We were expecting our first uh, child. And so, you know, I, I kind of figured I had to do something. I uh, wanted medical, you know, all the, all the benefits that come uh, from, from having a professional type of employment. Uh, I went to the recruiting station. And, you know, the recruiting office that I went to, uh, the only recruiters that were still in that office were the Navy recruiters. Everybody else was moving into a brand new office on the other side of the Bronx. And, you know, I was just at a point where I said, you know, uh, it didn't matter which branch. I just wanted in. Uh, walked in really gung-ho. Recruiter actually slowed me down. So I don't have, a, like, a horror story with a recruiter. <laughs> he actually slowed me down. I said, oh, let's, let's slow it down and let's, let's talk about this. Uh, so long story short, I was in the Navy for eight years. I started in communications. They merged us with the computer folks, created a new career field. Hmm. Uh, my first duty station was a ship in San Diego. Then I got stationed in DC at, at Navy intelligence. There I got into like cyber intelligence, cyber threat, cyber security stuff. When I separated from the Navy, I went to work for army intelligence mm. doing similar things, but as a civilian, I was working for, for a company. I was a contractor there. Uh, then I wound up switching companies, went to work at census bureau and, and was just kind of doing the it thing back and forth. And 2009, right, the, the economy was already, you know, things were starting to happen. Things were negative on the stock market, all that stuff. And I went through a layoff. Wow. Right? Nine-month layoff. But leading up to that, I don't know if I had kind of like the idea that things were kind of sort of potentially going sideways. But I had started doing my master's in educational and instructional technology. I was figuring, trying to fuse the IT and education stuff because I was kind of playing with the idea of getting into education. I I saw myself teaching like at the university level. Yeah, and that's why I was pursuing the masters and stuff. But when the when the layoff happened, uh, you know, about nine months in, and I couldn't find IT work down in Florida. By that point, I had moved down to Florida. You know, everything was going back to DC, and you know, with with my kids being young, and and uh, you know, just the situation, I just didn't want to go back up to DC. Yeah, and so uh, opportunity opened up to to get into a school here in, in Lehigh Acres, mm -hmm. uh, Eastern County High School is where I wound up going. Uh, I started off as a paraprofessional, as a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with, with uh, you know, life skills students. Uh, I loved that environment. I really loved those students. But that following year, the opportunity to teach in the classroom opened up, presented itself. So I, I taught U.S. history for seven years. Uh, the last couple of years, I also taught a program called AVID, Yes. Uh, advancement via individual determinations, like a college prep course, but it targets the middle student, right? So it targets those B and C students to kind of help them push up to the point that they can go ahead and pursue uh, post-secondary education. Really love that program. Uh, you know, just a few things started happening uh, in the education world. Uh, my, my youngest graduated. Um, a few changes were happening. And I had an opportunity to go work for a, a big company mm -hmm. uh, called Gartner. Uh, they're a big research and advisory company. I envisioned myself going to Gartner and getting back into IT work. Yeah. It's kind of where I saw this going. 
after I went through the the process of interviewing and, and everything, I actually ended up supporting salespeople. So I don't do sales, but I'm you know I coach sales executives on how to use the research that Gartner produces to improve their organizations. And you know there was a steep learning curve there. Yeah. But you know I dove into it. Uh, I got a really good grasp of it to the point that you know I have a, a real good understanding. And and so that's kind of going smooth. And that's where I am today. Okay. So that long roundabout just to kind of show like you know it's okay to kind of try new things. Don't be scared of, uh, you know, going in a different direction, even if it's not where your experience is. And just always being like a student myself. That That's kind of where it's always been. It's always being willing to learn uh, new things and, and willing to learn from anybody. You know, so that, that's just long, a long winded answer to your question. But no, that's, that's what you've actually hit the first two questions is what your educational path is, which is which is great and which is very interesting because I don't think I've ever interviewed anybody who's been through military and then education and then business world so that you've pretty much seen the gamut of everything, which is a fantastic. I, I love that path. Um, and you've had a, a, a an able, uh, you've been able to touch on like some high school or some students to, to teach them about that. And you've seen, you know, what's going on in, in that realm. And, and that's where I wanted to lead into the disrupt education question is what would it be or what did you see there that you would change in an education system, knowing what you know, actually with a very diverse path going into um where you are right now um, and that value that you bring, um, what would you change or what, what could you see as a big change in education? So I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to make changes and, and some of them, you know, it, it's something that's going to, it's going to have to happen over time. It's, it's, there's no overnight solutions, right? Uh, but some of them do need to be drastic changes. Uh, you know, I think we're still teaching for an era that no longer exists, mm-hmm. right? And so we're still teaching for that kind of industrial factory working era, you know, where the the, the belt change classes, <laughs> you know, get you ready to, you know, here's the bell to start work, to go to lunch, to come off of lunch, to go home, uh, right? And so I think there's a number of changes. Uh, here in Florida, we, we, ha- we have a, a lot of standardized testing, and I'm sure that's, that's similar all over the, the U.S. Yeah. But it's so heavy that, you know, it puts a lot of undue and unnecessary pressure on students. So at the third grade level, if they don't pass some of these state tests, they can be left back, even if the grades are are high enough to go mm-hmm. ahead and, and warrant getting passed on to the fourth grade. Yeah. All right, so that puts unnecessary stress because, you know, the state test, the teachers don't have access to it. And so, you know, people that say like, oh, they're just teaching to the test. Well, that's not totally true because they don't have access to the test questions. Right. Right. Um, Same thing at the high school level. You know, there's so many things that will determine whether or not a student can earn their high school diploma if they don't pass these state tests. Meanwhile, they're getting A's and B's and even some high C's, Mm -hmm. you know, but, but this, this one test is going to hold them back from being able to get a a full blown regular high school diploma. Right. Right? And I, I I see that as uh, a negative challenge but an opportunity to to make some changes and and fix things because once once a student is having difficulty with those kind of tests it it creates that kind of well why should i try why should i even bother kind of attitude right and so it puts a lot of then it it puts a lot of work on the teachers to kind of keep them motivated to go hey listen you can get it done if this doesn't work you know we can maybe take the act and, and get your score up on the act so that that cancels out the standardized test, right? So there's a lot of opportunities there. The other thing too is there's a huge push for college, right? Mm-hmm. Like the the only path out of high school <laughs> is college, college, college. And I, and I'm not saying no to college. I, I'm not I'm not negative on college, but you know when I first got out of the Navy and I went to to work for Northrop Grumman, mm-hmm. it wasn't my college degree that got me in. Yeah. It was the security clearance that I had coming out of the Navy that opened the door Yeah. because I honestly didn't have the exact experience that they needed. And I definitely didn't have the degree. My degree was not technical. My undergrad degree was in security administration, which doesn't exist anymore. (laughs) Uh, You know, it just kind of got swallowed up by criminal justice, but Mm -hmm. it kind of was a criminal justice degree. 
but even there, so at, you know, at some point, I, at event, about two years in, I became a manager. And as I'm doing interviews and hiring, I wasn't concerned, and neither were the other managers concerned with college de- degrees. You know, if the person had a security clearance automatically, that automatically put them to the top because mm-hmm. we knew there's a good chance that they're going to get cleared because they're already coming with a clearance and we just have to transfer it from either whatever military branch they're coming from or whatever other organization they were coming from. Also, if they had industry certifications, mm. that also bubbled them to, to the top of the list versus somebody that was just coming with a, with a straight degree. Right? So, so there's a balance. You mm-hmm. know, some, some places of employment require that degree just to get in the door. So depending on what your goals are and what you want to do, yes, college is the, the absolute necessary path, but I think we need to help students explore yeah. what it is they want to do before ramming college <laughs> as the only solution. That's, that's the issue I have is we shouldn't present it as the only solution and the guaranteed way to success because there's so many other paths and opportunities. And <clears throat> I think it's so true. Um, I am a huge, huge backer of just exposing students to so many different things before they do. That's a great point. And, you know, um, the certifications and the things that we can do, in, in a, especially in a secondary level, um, that, that's, that's fantastic. And also the press, pressure points of tests that we all don't learn at the exact same time. So you, you're making excellent points and, and I appreciate you sharing those. And on the back of all of this, I hear you're writing a book, doing a little bit of uh, writing. Tell us a little bit about that journey, because that seems like your next big learning journey. Uh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely steep learning curve there. Um, so it's something I've wanted to do quite for a long time, since I was probably in the Navy. I've toyed with the idea of writing a book. Now, back then, I was kind of toying with the idea of writing a fiction book, mm-hmm. you know, something that's more like a end of the world kind of thing. You know, I was like, oh, it'd be great if this would turn into a movie. You know, mm-hmm. so I toyed with that. And I, you know, I probably have it on a three and a half inch <laughs> disc somewhere, which kind of shows from how long I've been thinking about this. <laughs> but after having been a teacher and a coach and having the different conversations with students and using, right, different videos that have been available, you know, so everything from Eric Thomas to even yeah. Casey Neistat and, and even Gary V. And, and there I had to be a little careful with, you know, being able to pause <laughs> quickly and kind of... Not a lot of cursing. Right? <laughs> because, because of colorful language. But sometimes, to be honest, I, I would just let it play because, you know, students sometimes just need to hear it raw. Right. But when, when I would then get into those conversations with students, and some of these students, they weren't even my students. Like sometimes it would just be somebody in, in the hallway going through a rough patch and I'd be the one there and I'd pull them to the side and have the conversation. You know, and it got to the point that students would be like, you know, hey, you should speak or, hey, you should write a book. And I would be like, oh, yeah, you know, that'd be wonderful. I just don't know how. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I went to a, a conference down here in South Florida uh, back in the spring. There was an opportunity to do a book writing master class that I joined there. And, and to be honest, it wasn't like super, super in depth, but it was all the basic framework to yeah. just kind of get going. And once I got started. Part of it, too, was getting around the other people that were taking the same course, yep. right? Getting online and sharing ideas with them. Had an opportunity to actually go to the other side of Florida and meet in person and just share ideas and just getting around people that are on a similar path or at least have a, a similar mindset and, and get new ideas. So for the book, I wound up shifting. I'm still writing the book, but I, I'm releasing a journal planner yeah. ahead of time. And the idea is to get it. For, for schools, right? So I already know as a teacher, got to have something at the beginning of class to, to get students kind of in that framework, right? Five minute thing, little writing prompts and stuff. So mm-hmm. the idea behind the planner, it's all done. And I just have to you know, do the final formatting and get it uploaded and, and all those things like that. But it's it's quotes, quotes that, that have I've used with my students, quotes that I've used for myself. And then writing prompts. Some of the writing prompts have to do with the quotes. Some of them are just writing prompts to get students, you know, just in the habit of journaling um, with nothing to do with school specifically or content, just getting them in the right frame of mind and just yeah. different activities throughout the book. And I've set up the journal in a way that it kind of lines up with the idea of an interactive notebook, if, if you're familiar with yeah. those, right? So 
right hand side lines and, yeah. and writing, left hand side blank page, and you know more the creative side. Um, and so I, I've kind of designed it in that way, so hopefully it can get it into into the schools and uh, and then you know into the general public as well. And then the the book, you know, is going to be kind of a it's a, it's a personal improvement book, mm-hmm. but it's my my origin story, if you will. So mm-hmm. kind of some of the things we touched on today, but everything from everything I've experienced and witnessed growing up, uh, things I've witnessed in the military, all the setbacks and all the redefining myself and, yeah. and, and all the things that went through my mind, like, oh, man, you know, how bad do I suck to have to go through <laughs> another setback? But, but then and climbing out of that thought process and that mentality, right? So, you know, trying to be as, as transparent as possible just so that people can go ahead and say, you know, it's okay to, you know, have those failures and those setbacks as long as, you learn from it. You don't let it kind of fester and become permanent. And if you have to sh- completely shift and go down a different path and reinvent yourself, it's okay. Yeah, and it's okay to learn something new and be willing to learn. And so that's going to be the goal behind the book: is kind of show my path, show all those setbacks and those disruptions, and the reinventing myself and you know learning from different people along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and being willing to learn. One of the things I learned early on in the military was being willing to learn, even if the person technically was junior mm. to to me. You know, the first example I had, if I can shout him out real quick, but you know, my my chief, uh, Ali Mack, Oliver McLean, he came in as an E six. I was like an E nothing, maybe an E three or something like that, and mm-hmm. he grabbed me and said, "Hey, walk me around." the communication shop and, and, and teach me all the stuff, all the circuits. I was like, but you're an E6, you know, so we had that conversation and, and he said that example. And he, you know, at that point he had been in the military, I, I forgot how long, double digit years. Yeah. I wasn't even at a year yet, but you know, he came and he, he learned from me and he said that example early on, you got to be willing to learn from anybody regardless of what the, the status is there. Uh, none of that should come into play. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that, that you do and what kind of drew me to you on Instagram was that message. Um, every day when I, when I see, oh, here's Coach Payvon, like I, I have to listen. I, I look and, and it is that message. You, you give people um, a, a kind of an inspirational, hey, let's go. You guys got this. And I think that's what people need to make that change and to become a curious learner. So kudos to you, man. That's great. Where can people find you online? It's, it's going to be at Coach Pabone everywhere. So, you know, one of the things I did early on when I was teaching and coaching, um, I, I knew, you know, I don't remember who it was that, that mentioned it. I think I went to an ASCD conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it was. It was an ASCD conference during a spring break, and there was a principal, Kofele, and and he was like, no matter what, even if when he wasn't, like, necessarily in the school system anymore, he was still principal Kofele because that was his brand. And when he said that, I said, oh, I got to lock into yeah. a brand. And at, at that point, you know, at the school, it just made sense. You know, even even students that were, one, not in my classes, that were not any of my athletes, they still were, were referring to me like, hey, Coach Pabon, they would see me in the hallway. And so I was like, that's it. You know, that that's going to be the brand, right, Coach Pabon. And, and I can kind of tie it into everything I've done since I was young to, to now. I'm, I'm always going to – the goal is to always be coaching somehow, even if it's not athletically, but it's to kind of provide that, that insight and guidance and the example. And, you know, the, my, my biggest thing is to, I want to be able to show the failure and then the, the next step after failure. Cause I don't want to, sh- I want to avoid trying to show like a perfect life with, with no disruption in between, I, you know, cause that's just not real. So I, I'm trying to go ahead and bring that out. And show like, hey, you know, there's failure, there's setbacks, there's stumbling blocks, but uh, you know, it's okay. We just got to learn from it and keep moving forward. And always play to win. Oh, absolutely, and that's as uh, so I was actually just going to say. Your shirt says it all too, um, Coach Pabone. Thank you so much for being on the uh, podcast and the in the vlog. Um, Honestly, uh, I'll put all your information up underneath here. Um, people do need to to hear your message. You have such a lens across the board in, in military, civilian life, professional life, coaching, uh, and education. Um, so much to offer. Um, so all you disruptors out there, check out Coach Pabone. Um, 
Thank you so much for being on uh, with us today, man, and sharing your story. It, it was my pleasure. I appreciate you trusting me to, to go ahead and, and share a message with, with your audience. I, I don't take that lightly. Um, and, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to having you uh, on my podcast. That's kind of one of the next things, too, for me, too, is to kind of re relaunch a podcast that I was playing with and, and just want to make sure that it's it's uh, worthy of, of having you on and, and, and sharing and have some traction. So Absolutely, man. I'd be honored. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, till next time, we'll see you on Disrupt Education. All right. Be good.